guys, welcome back to my channel, the end of 2021. Can you believe it? I am going to be doing a chatty get ready with me today. It's been too long since we had a chat. It's the end of the year. It's time to get reflective. I have had some crimble limbo time off. I've just been chilling. I've been playing with Lego. <laughs> I'm going to go with Lego for Christmas. And I've just been really, I suppose, thinking. And I thought we could have a chat to get ready with me. I thought we could chat a little bit about the year ahead. And I'm going to do my makeup. It's literally New Year's Eve right now. I'm getting ready to go for dinner. I am not going to really go into the makeup or, or the products and things like that but I will list everything down below. I was going to do my hair first, but I'm not. I'm going to do my makeup first. I'm extension free. This is all my hair. It's got a bit longer. Look at that. I think this is the first year that it's got to the end of the year and actually there's some stuff that I really want to change going into 2022. 2021 for me was actually a really good year. I'm so lucky to be able to say that because it's still just the weirdest time. It got to the end of the year and everyone was creating these um, videos, right? The 2021 throwback videos. And at first glance, I looked through my camera roll and I was like, all I've done is stay in my house and work. That's all I've done. And then I actually looked at my camera roll properly and I was like, shit, actually I've had it, I've, I've been really lucky this year. I suppose the standout moments for me were moving into our house, which is a huge thing. Something that probably never would have happened if it hadn't been for the pandy. Another thing is Vive. I can't quite believe that we've grown so much. We are in Harrods. We have been on Cult Beauty for the whole time. It's just, it's quite, quite amazing. The team has grown hugely. We've got the most amazing team working on it. So that's been fully insane. But something that I've realized, and so many of you will know what I'm talking about, is when you are really busy, it can be a little bit difficult to, to sit and realize when you've got something that's worth celebrating. A great example is Harrods, right? Harrods got um, like secured months before it went in to the shops, right? Months before our counter was built in Edinburgh. So when it was secured, that was a bit of a like celebratory moment, but not really because it hadn't happened yet. But then by the time it happened, we were already onto the next things, like we're already working on the next things. So I think to, I suppose, okay, first resolution for me is taking time to celebrate things when there's something worth celebrating. I'm not very good at it. I rarely stop to smell the flowers. I feel like we're always just muscle on getting the next thing done and even if it's just a quiet I don't, like, I don't mean having a party or anything but I just having a quiet moment to be like great and maybe even like well done if it's if it warrants a well done so instead of just constantly steaming ahead just taking a second to stop and realize what you're doing and how proud you should be you can take that and apply it to anything you know if you guys are at uni or school or you're doing great at work or you've got a new job or anything like that. I think oftentimes you forget to celebrate and just say well done to yourself. So that's number one. There's literally no mechanic in this video. <laughs> I've not I've not made a plan of what I'm gonna talk about. I was literally just gonna brain dump upon you. I suppose it's a bit of a life update as well, isn't it? This year, me and Jack, uh, we've obviously moved into this house and we started ripping it apart quite quickly. We've not done any major works and major works for me would be like um, bathrooms and kitchens and stuff. But what I've realised is how happy it makes me completing things for the house. We're not in a rush, we want to do it well, we don't want to rush anything at all because I think when you're renovating a house, if you rush anything, the more likely you are to not like what you've done. I think the pace that we're at is really nice. I probably would have liked to have had more done, but with work being so busy, I think it's just hard to juggle that. But knowing how happy it makes me feel, I think next year a good priority would be to set a realistic goal of what we'd like to achieve for renovating the house. Not a huge amount, maybe even like painting some of the rooms. Like our living room downstairs, we probably won't do up for a year or two or three, but a lick of paint on the walls would make a huge difference. So just figuring out what's a priority. Jen Atkin, I'm sure all of you know who Jen Atkin is. She does this really cool thing every year. It's not really affirmations or anything, but the question you ask yourself is, what would I do if there was no way to fail? And then six months have, so you'd have what you would be and you would do, so that could be your job or whatever. And then you do it again, but 12 months. So I, I went through my notebooks just to see if I'd written any of this kind of stuff down so I could reflect on it and see where we were at. I've literally wrote 2019. What would I do if there was no way to fail? Have, be, do in six months, have, be, do in 12 months. I didn't write anything down. 
I wrote it out and then I didn't write anything down. And I think it's because I get a little bit nervous setting goals for myself in case I don't achieve them. When I looked at it, I was really disappointed. I was like, oh, come on, you could have written anything. You could have literally said, in six months, I would like to have be six months older. You could do anything. It doesn't need to be that serious. But I didn't write anything at all. So I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to do it properly. And it's not something, I don't think, you know, you can share it if you want. But I might keep it to myself and then share it in like a year's time and see where we're at. It's a nice way to think forward and be a little bit of a dreamer about it. One thing that I found in a book, another book, I think this is pretty old too. So the last thing I wrote in this book was halfway through 2020. So it's actually before the brand even launched. Something that I was better at last year was spending more time doing kind of like meditation and stuff like that. So someone that I really love, Tamara Dryson. She's incredible. She is a, like a crystal healer. She is great for tarot readings. I've had tarot readings from her before as well. I think it was one of her like Instagram lives. Do you remember last year, everyone did millions of Instagram lives to keep each other company? I don't know why we stopped doing that. I suppose we can do more things out and about, but not really. I'm pretty sure I was listening to one of her lives anyway. I did a brain dump about everything that was stressing me out. Anything that was making me unhappy, or things that I just wanted to change. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this is like a year and a half ago because some of it's changed. So I think that, you know, focusing on the good is great and, you know, manifesting or whatever, you know, keeping it all positive, but actually being able to brain dump the things that are stressing you out, it's almost like you take it off your plate and you put it somewhere else. And then when I found this, I was like, okay. So I've got seven things here. First thing was Juno being an antisocial dog and her not being happy. So what I've realized, just because Juno is antisocial, it doesn't mean that she's not happy. She still is antisocial, but because we've moved house, we're no longer in the middle of nowhere. Our old house was a, like a proper farm almost. It was like up in the countryside. There was no one there. We hardly ever bumped into people or dogs. So that just made Juno really nervous, I suppose. I don't know. We've, we've, we've looked right into it. We've had her away at training. I don't think I've mentioned that before, but we had her away getting trained. Did it help? Yes, she has good days and bad days I think some dogs are just like that so I've kind of made peace with it a lot more and they're, at, they're actually there's some trainers that I found on TikTok I think the guy is called it's like South End Training on TikTok who is quite unbelievable and I did think I was like I wonder if he would come up to Glasgow and help us with Juno you know, she has a happy dog so I've kind of made peace with that so when I read that it just kind of made me sad I was like oh god yeah <laughs> That really did. It used to make me cry because I used to just think she was so unhappy. Number two, well, I wrote the house. And this is our old house. Uh, we, we just kind of fell out of love with that house towards the end. I suppose I wrote this like six months before we sold it. Something that I've never spoken about was the dynamic of the house and the surrounding was hard for us. Me and Jack are really, we're quite private people. For the job that we do, we're quite private. But we um, didn't have like the best time living there. So when I read that, I was like, Woohoo! Because where we live now is so great. The, the house itself, I am fully in love with. Third thing was YouTube. I was getting myself right stressed out that I didn't have enough time. It was when I was building Vive. But back then, actually, I remember that my time management skills, back then my time management skills were not good. And by that, I just I was just burning myself out. I was constantly working. I have a, a weird thing that see if I get a message or an email, even if I know that I've got a couple of days to reply to it, it will literally sit at the front of my mind the whole time. So any other task I feel really distracted by. But yeah, I think because of the shift in my work and I was going from just creating content online and basically like weekly vlogging our lives which is not a hard job I feel like me and Jack work really hard at it but it's not a hard job going from that to being the the founder and the chief creative officer of a, a, a pretty unbelievable brand if I do say so myself I'm trying to celebrate it a wee bit it was just a huge shift it was a huge shift in my time back when I wrote this I think I was just settling into my new role and I suppose part of me was mourning the fact that I don't have the same amount of time anymore and if you watch our weekly vlogs you'll you'll probably have heard me speaking about that because a lot of the stuff that we used to do in the vlogs we don't have time for anymore so actually I think that that YouTube not having enough time to to do this it hasn't really changed, but what has changed is my time management skills. I think I'm a much more organized person than I was when I wrote this. Number four, launching a brand during a pandemic. 
and not having enough time. So there's a, there's a running theme here about not having enough time when really that's all about time management, no? I think I need to make the time. So if there's stuff that I really want to do in life, I have to make the time to do it. And I think at one point I got so panicked about it all. I wasn't angry or anything like that because I just, I, I, I want to do everything. That's the problem and I just can't. There's a famous phrase and it's like, less but better. Do less and do it better rather than trying to spread yourself thin across everything. The pandemic. I feel like what happened with everyone, and I have been generally really unaffected by it. I can't actually believe it. I know that so many people have it's ruined their lives. I find it just so hard, difficult to even think about because I feel really guilty, actually. I feel really guilty that I have managed to get away pretty unscathed. I don't know if any of you are like this. I missed the first lockdown. I, I literally will never forget it. March 2020, the weather was weirdly great. We all went into lockdown. The work quiet and right down, I think, that rightly so, brands were kind of freaking out. They were like, oh God, what's this? What does this look like? What, what's this gonna look like for us? So I just remember my work really quieting down, which terrified me. Instead of being scared, I just kind of leaned into it. Me and Jack ended up filming that TV show, Mental. We just spent time together. We spent time in the garden. I started to learn how to cook a little bit more. And yeah, I just remember it being kind of fun. At the time it wasn't, at the time it was so scary, but looking back, I was like, wow, that's probably like the most still we had been in years because before that we were traveling so much. Yeah, it was just a proper break. And then Zoom, Zoom happened. I can't wait to never use Zoom again. So yeah, I think that launching a brand through a pandemic, it wasn't the way that we wanted to do it, but I'm, I'm, I'm a happy about it, maybe. It really brought like our community together. Yeah, it was just a really fun time actually. Terrifying. I've never been so scared in my whole life launching Vive. In hindsight, we launched Vive on 8th of November, 2020, and it took me probably until June this year to feel like myself again, because there was something about it that just terrified me to my core. I felt like because I was the founder of this brand, I had people working for me, I felt like I was like, shit, I need to grow up or I need to, you know, polish myself in a certain way and I need to act like this because this is what everyone needs me to be. To me like seven months to realize that that is ridiculous and stupid. Probably the worst thing I could have done try and censor myself in any way. But the fear, honestly, the, the fear just got to me. Meeting people at the pop-up a few months ago who were also, you know, launching their own business. It was so crazy because they get it. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. It's terrifying because you're putting your heart and soul on a billboard for people to judge and tear apart if they want, but also for people to fall in love with it just as much as you do. And that's the part that makes it all worthwhile. But the general un, like unsettledness of it really took me by surprise. I thought I would just grow straight into the person that I needed to be. But yeah, it took me a wee while. I hope no one's finding this boring. I just think that I learned so much from listening to other people's experiences and I can take what like the advice, I suppose, and change it to suit me in my life. I don't know. I'm gonna keep going though. Number five not being able to travel. Nothing's changed there. <laughs> so, I was in you in. I want to do my eyes. So not being able to travel is something that um, is such a privileged thing to moan about, but I think this one, I don't even need to explain it. I know that so many of us are missing it. But for me, I feel like actually it's something that I really love doing with Jack. And because now, We've just been at home all the time, working away. Like all we can do is work really. We've managed to sneak in some fun, but I feel like all we have done is work. That's great and when you love your job, it makes it even easier, but it's still work. And I think that so many of us are probably struggling with not giving ourselves a break or a rest. I said to Jack the other day, I was it was after Christmas, I think it was Boxing Day or maybe the day after, and we'd been out for lunch at one of our favorite restaurants. We'd come home, we were having a beer, I was playing with my Harry Potter Lego. We were watching TV, I think we were watching the new season of Dexter. It was probably like one of the first times in the whole year that I've been like, I feel totally chilled out. I was like, I've not really looked at my phone. There was just something about it that made me so happy. And I would like to implement a little bit more of that going into next year. The pandemic's made us all kind of panicky about work. And like, if we don't do it now, then we might not get to do it later. And what if this happens and what if that happens? But stillness is important. I don't know what to do with my eyes. Maybe I'll do grungy. Well, uh, yeah. Not done that in a while. I nearly cried the other day because I read an article that was, and who knows if it's true or not. I'm gonna hold on to the hopes that it is true. Scientists are seeing 
this last wave as the beginning of the end because so many people, so many people have coronavirus right now. But the levels of, of like how sick they are are really different to the first wave. I don't know, but as soon as I read that scientists think it's the beginning of the end, my eyes filled up because I was like, please. <laughs> Number six, how funny. Again, time management, me being stupid. Um, number six was not having any time off. Uh, I have next week off because I booked it off. I booked it off and I was like, no, the world will not fall apart if I take a week off. Self-employed people kind of get a haul, yeah. I think I've grown. I think I'm better at time management. I also, when I'm tired and I'm starting to feel a bit burnt out, I can start to feel a bit sorry for myself. Not a trait I like about myself, but I think I was just a bit like, oh, I don't have any time off. The last thing, number seven, was pandemic affecting life and friendships. At the start, we all knew what was going on. We all knew that the world was upside down, but over time, we kind of got used to the pandemic and then we forgot that that's the reason that our life and friendships are getting affected. There was moments in time, probably towards the end of 2020 and the start of this year, that I was like, I'm a terrible friend, I've not seen any of my friends. And then I remembered, I was like, oh wait, I can't see them. I would feel guilty for not living my best life. And I was like, oh wait, I can't live my best life because I'm not allowed to go anywhere. And I think as well because we, you know, we were allowed to go back to work and we were allowed to maybe go out for a dinner that we felt things were getting back to normal, but actually they've not been normal for a long time. So if you are suffering with guilt on that, I just think that we all need to give ourselves a wee bit of a break. So now that we've cast our minds back, let's cast our minds forward, shall we? I have some resolutions. Most of them are so simple. One of my resolutions is to cook more. I really like cooking. There's one thing that I can make. Thank goodness it's like me and Jack's favourite thing to eat because I make it at least once a week. For Christmas I got some really nice cooking stuff. Can't believe I got so excited. I got so excited. So excited about these pots. Another is to work on my time management so I can have time to go and do fun things and see the world. Scotland's a really beautiful place. I want to see more of it. I am really guilty of putting all my energy and effort into work and then when I'm finished work I have nothing left for myself. Not saying any of this to be like uh, it's just stuff that I've realised. So because I don't give I don't have anything left for myself, as soon as I've put you know, as soon as I finish work, I put all my energy into my work. As soon as I finish I lie on the couch and I'm like that ah, I've got no space in my head to book something or plan something and I'm just like ah, I'll just lie here. And that's not really the way to live is it that's one of the things better time management take the time off because i've done my work and i can take time off to go and do fun things what else okay something that i have started doing reading i really love reading i want to do more of it i spend less time on my phone when i'm reading which is ironic because i actually use the kindle app on my phone to read i'm really enjoying reading my books instead of mindless scrolling which leads me on to my next thing that i do not want to do any more of i don't want to mindlessly scroll anymore see if i give myself half an hour i do find scrolling on my phone really indulgent everyone does this see if i realize that i've spent like three hours just scrolling on my phone i feel sick with myself i'm like what a waste of time i have put a cap on my time it sounds ridiculous but i give myself an hour you would be shocked how fast that hour disappears. I am going to spend my time off at the start of the year decluttering my whole entire life. I'm gonna be donating and actually selling and binning a bunch of clothes. Another thing, I want to get more tattoos and piercings. Again, something that I just don't book in. I, I never book myself in for tattoos and piercings because um, I'm worried I'm gonna be too busy. I just need to book it and go. I've booked in, I'm getting tattooed in January. Super excited. And I'm gonna go and get my fourth lobes pierced at Asher de Mio when I'm next in London. So just, just doing more of the stuff that I like. I love bloody getting my nails done, tattoos, piercings, hair. That makes me sound like I'm really frivolous with it. I'm not, I do think about my tattoos and piercings. One thing that I've not mentioned, it's a very popular one for New Year's resolutions, fitness. Diet. I've not been on my Peloton as much as I would like. So I would love to make sure that I'm on it. I mean, I don't want to say something mental, but at least four times a week, 20 minutes in the morning. Doesn't sound hard, but is it hard? Yes, it is. And then I suppose 
with eating, oh, just everything in moderation. It's as simple as that, right? Healthy, balanced lifestyle. That's it. That's it. I loved that I wrote all that stuff down because going through it all and reflecting on it, I just feel way more like balanced and a bit more focused. I just feel much better about it all. I feel very calm within myself. Something that's really changed for me this year, 2021, I am really um, good with my like sensitivity. I don't know. I just approach, I think I approach things with like a lot more calmness than I ever have had. I think back in the day, I took things really personally a lot of the time. I think for a while there, I censored myself a little bit too much for the fear that, I don't know, people would have something to say. And as I'm getting older, I just don't care. When I was looking through my notebooks, I found a completely unused five minute journal which I thought was weird. I really did not know I had that. I don't know why I've got it. So I'm going to pull that out and I thought I could just have it sitting there with a pen and try and do it every night because it is really good to look back at and it does help you have perspective every day. If I'm ever struggling or if I ever really get in my own head, you know, like I said earlier, you kind of start to lose perspective a little bit, which is I think the most dangerous thing that can happen to a person because that's when you become selfish and ignorant. Whenever that happens to me, I just like to think, I just like to remind myself how tiny and ins insignificant I am in this huge world and that immediately makes me feel like I'm like, ah, it's really not that big a deal. So I think trying to keep perspective, try time management, keep on going with that and really try and figure that out because it is the only thing that will give your life balance. It doesn't matter how busy you are, it doesn't matter what your job is, it doesn't matter if you are got people to look after, if you don't. Without good time management, that's when you start to just have no time for yourself. And there's literally only one person that can figure that out. You and me together. Another thing that I really want to do next year is more makeup. I am just gonna start my year off creating fun makeup looks for myself because I miss it so much. I feel like for a while there, when I was really busy, the only time I did my makeup was for work. And that is never what I've been about. I've always sat and played with makeup. I don't know if you remember that I did Jamie's Week of Colour and I just chose a different colour every day and we all created looks. And by the end of it, there was like tens of thousands of people of you guys that had all joined in and it was so fun. Maybe we should do another one of those next year. All right, I'm gonna quickly shoot off and do my lashes and any finishing touches and I'll be back to do my lips because this video is going to be far too long. <laughs> I got a bit carried away. I really wanted wings and I stacked two different types of lashes on top of each other because it's new year. Right, let's do our lips. <laughs> lips, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just do my nude. Shock. I'm quite liking that, you know, I might just leave it there and do a little bit of lip do and then I really need to sort this hair out. What should I do with this hair? Let's do slick. I don't know if this is going to do what I want. Moisture and shine cream. I mean it better because it's going to be ruined after this. Oh, I don't know what it is about winter and me wanting to look like I'm on holiday. Like a summer holiday. I think that next year is all about focusing on thieve, work, house renovation, family and friends, having fun. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write down anything that I'm not happy about. What do I want to change? What do I not have any time for anymore? What do I really not like doing that I'm doing right now that maybe I can change or change the way I approach it or change the way I do it? It does feel slightly negative writing all that down, but like I said, it's just getting it out of your head and onto a bit of paper. Right, let me go and get my suit on for the final vibes and I'll be right back. <laughs> Feeling very sharp, in fact. Right, let me just add some hydration to my body and then top tip if you are chest out and your face is a wee bit more tanned than your chest it's not bad i'm bronzed i'm going to use my you tan tan and water just two sprays and that will develop before i go out and then i'll be a wee bit more bronzy in the chest when i was getting changed i was trying to think if there was anything else i'm excited about cooking cooking gardening hobbies hobbies out with work basically but yeah it's been really fun catching up let me know if you've got any New Year's resolutions. I don't think I've got any firm New Year's resolutions in the traditional sense of I want to give up this or I want to start this. I just generally want to have a consistently good life. That would be good, that would be nice. But it feels like it's been a wee while since we had a DMC, a deep meaningful chat. And I thought it was a nice way to end the year uh, considering I've been slightly quieter on here. Right, they're not working. <sighs> I just found these. So these were originally for bridesmaids duties for Cara's wedding, but how fun are they? Yeah, they're the vibe. 
So guys, that's me done. I feel like this is a great look to end the evening. Thank you so much. I feel like I need to say this every, I feel like I actually need to probably dedicate a good hour to each of you to thank you properly. So many of you have been here for so long. There's a lot of people that have joined us along the way. The kindness and how beautiful you all are to your very souls is, is just amazing to me. Thank you for always being just so supportive and so caring to me and each other. I truly would not be here today doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for all of you. So thank you so much. I really hope that 2021 has been kind to you all. I have a very, I mean, you're not meant to say this, are you touch wood? But I have a really great feeling about 2022 for me and all of you. And other than that, from when I'm filming this, I'll see you all next year. Bye. That was pretty nice. And I want to do, oh God, that's a lot of my hair that just fell out. What the fuck is in my eye? Oh, what is going on under my fucking eye? I mean, that looks fucking ridiculous. This concealer is creasing on me today. I suppose I was, oh my God, I haven't broke these. Do you think it's so weird that you can see your, like, where the tears come out? I keep on getting angel numbers, I swear to God. I like this makeup a lot. I am continually, that's not a word.